Hi guys, welcome back to the Library of Alexandria. And today, guys, today is going to be my 2021 year in review and some channel updates, whatever that means, and also some shout outs. So this is gonna be kind of a catch-all, like summary, it's the conclusion paragraph of a five paragraph essay where I'll use a bunch of words to pad it, like because of the fact that, when you can literally just say because. And my issue with that is that why do students think that I'm stupid? I don't assign a lot of essays, but the ones I do are just absolutely nightmarish. Why do they think that I don't know that they're saying because of the fact that so they can pad the word length? Like, I don't even, I don't even give a word length. I'm like, as, as much as you need to answer the question, which I freaking hate, because of the fact that, just say because, just say because. Oh, due to the fact that, shut up. Anyway, I haven't really done kind of a year wrap up. I didn't do one last year. I just, I got some top 10 stuff coming. But in 2021, I read 69 books of varying length. Some of them were short stories. You know, I tally everything I do in my red spreadsheet. And some of them were audiobooks, and uh, one of those was, was a DNF. And the spread of that, and then you're going to love this, guys. You're going to love this. Of those 69 books, I had one DNF, one one star, one one and a half star, one two star, one two and a half star, six three stars, three three and a half stars, ten four star, six four and a half stars, and then 30 nine five-star books. I truly am the five-star strumpet. I'm the five-star madam at this point. Are you kidding me? Anyway, guys, I like most of what I read. I'm not... I don't pick it up if I don't think I'm going to really like it. And also, I'm not super picky. I really, I like stories of all kinds. But as you can see, some of them, you know, aren't five star. Anyway, out of those 69 books, 49 of them were fantasy. So, you know, 20 of them weren't. 13 of them were sci-fi. So those are the two biggest categories by far, but I definitely read the most fantasy you know, out of anything. Uh, two were gothic suspense. <laughs> That's Daphne du Maurier. It's the only, she's the only one that fits into there. Uh, four were historical fiction. And then one was epic poetry, which is the Iliad. Uh, and then of those, of those, uh, of all those books, 65 of them were adult. And then four of them were YA. And of those four YA books, I liked three of them. I just don't read a ton of YA, but I like three of them. There's only one that I didn't really care for. So, that's pretty good. My, my goal, my Goodreads goal was 60. And I didn't, I didn't read 60 books. I read several short stories. I read like eight short stories. So I really read 61. Oh, look at that. I did beat it. I did beat it. Nice. Very cool. But uh, the DNF also counts, and it shouldn't. So. so anyway, that's an average. That is an average star rating of like 4.46 or something like that. So there you have it. I liked most of the crap that I read. Now, I started, I started a bunch of series in this, uh, in, in this year. Last year, I did 15 series I want to start in 2021. And of those 15 series, I, I didn't do super well. I started four of them. And by started, I mean that I read the first book in three of them. And then I, 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 I finished one of the series that I said I was going to start. Uh, so that was Red Rising. I, I read, I started, and finished it in 2021. Uh, the other three that I started, that I wanted to start was Dagger and Coin, which I read the first book, Spell Slinger, which I read the first book, and Ryeria Revelations, which I read the first book just barely, right here in December. So I didn't do super well. Hopefully I'm going to do better on that one this year when that video comes out. Stay tuned. Now I did finish seven series or eight if you count Red Rising. It's hard to count Red Rising because it's not done, but I did finish it. I guess you can count it as like the first three. I finished the, the first trilogy and I am caught up to where it is now. I finished Malice and Book of the Fallen, The Discworld City Watch, uh, Books of Babel, The Long Price Quartet, Mistborn Era 1, The Warlord Chronicles, and finally Faithful in the Fallen. So those are the seven slash eight series that I finished this year. 
uh, which isn't too bad, but I mean, I only had one book left in Malazan. I had, uh, I had several, I had about half the City Watch. Uh, I, had ha I had two of Faithful and Fallen left, two Long Price Quartets left, the entire Warlord Chronicles, uh, two of Mistborn, only one of the Books of Babel left. So I, I did pretty well. I did pretty well with, with, with trying to close out some series, and I'm going to hopefully zero in and close out even more this year so I can stop having all these freaking open series. And so this year has just been a blast. Like, I've met so many, you know, awesome people on BookTube because that's why, you know, that's why we do it, is the community. And, like, I mean that. <laughs> I know, I know, that's probably, that's what everyone says. That's the, that's the, that's the, uh, that's the answer that has the good optics, right? That's why when you're interviewing someone, you got to ask them something besides what's the best part of BookTube because everyone says the community, but it's true. It's true. And I got even closer with the people that I had met last year, class of 2020. I got to do some really awesome collabs. I did so many collabs this year, guys, that my wife was like, look, you do too many collabs. Like every single weeknight of yours is taken up with something. And I'm like, you know what? I do do too many collabs. And then the end of the year was really slowed down for me because I was just burned out on school and were, and I, I I didn't want to do anything. Like I wanted to I wanted to read. That's what I wanted to do. But I didn't want to do anything else. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to. I just didn't want to do anything. I was so tired uh, from doing work and teenagers. And then I got sick, and so it really slowed down. And I'm I was trying to find a balance uh, in work life to where I want to be able to do booktube stuff. But part of the problem is that I'm not good with uh, a lot of unstructured time. I always think that I have more time later than I have, than I actually have, and so I, it just slips through my fingers like gra like grains through the hourglass, and so I just, I'm just not good at time management, and rather than abandoning that, so if I have something that I that I want to get done, and I fritter away a bunch of time, rather than being like, well, I guess I can't get that thing done, instead. I just end up doing that thing and it ends up taking over like family time or, you know, outing time or staying up too late rather than realizing, well, you should have used your time better. It's like, no, well, I have to get this done. I wish I hadn't done that. So that, that's really kind of the problem. And so I'm really still trying to find the balance, uh, trying to be, be able to work ahead some so that I'm not, when the, when, when the school year is in, I'm not, you know, so inundated with so much. And so that I, I can spend more time with my wife and my family. And I don't, like, I don't want to be in positions where I have to be like, well, I gotta do stuff so I can't go hang out with anybody. Because, I, like, you know, we have to have a real life, not just a digital one. So, I'm working on it. Hopefully 2022 is going to be better. One of the reasons 2022 is probably going to be better is I finally found a wonderful, wonderful doctor who understands my mental and emotional kind of foibles, and I'm finally on medication that works, and I feel better, and I don't have quite so much negative self-talk, and when that's not there, I don't feel quite as burdened and overwhelmed which then contributes to just feeling down all the time. So I have been on the mend and feel significantly better. And so hopefully 2022 is going to be a great year. Now, some of these collabs, like I did, I did so many collabs. Uh, first of all, I started, I started Jeopardy. I did 10 episodes of 11 episodes. Yeah, 11 episodes of Book Jeopardy. And that has been so much fun. You guys in the audience are just always a blast to have. Makes it worth doing. It's so much work, but it's so, so fun. Uh, there has not been a Jeopardy the last couple months, but there will be uh, in January. Uh, but we're going to get right back on it. It's just so much fun. I'm so grateful to the contestants and everybody's been able to do it. Uh, who, you know, for you guys who uh, simultaneously enjoy and loathe the perhaps or a court of blank and blank categories, whatever. It's been an absolute blast. I also started a new series, a new 256 part series called Better Know a Booktuber, of which two episodes are out. And those initially, oh my gosh, like too many hours to edit because I am not a tech whiz and I'm not an editing whiz. So it always takes me forever to figure something out and then I know how to do it. But Trying to figure it out takes forever. And there was too much time between my first and second one, so I forgot how to do it between. And then what I was able to do with Leslie, I was not able to do with Michael, just because of the way we, we filmed differently. 
And so it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. But finally, I figured out the solution. And so it should be smooth sailing from there. So look for more of that in this new year as well. It's been a blast. Uh, I did several collabs on Faithful in the Fallen and of Blood and Bone, except the last one, which I missed out. I did this with with Abby and Philip and Alex and then Jimmy and Sarah and Patrick. Th those were so much fun. I loved getting to talk to Philip, uh, Philip Chase, about Guards Guards. That was a blast. One of my favorite collabs that I did all year was, it, w it wasn't really a collab, it's just I went on Bookborn's channel to talk about is literacy failing in this country? Do we have a declining literacy or, or whatever? And we ended up talking about the future of literacy and the issues with the education system. And it was, it was one of the most rewarding discussions that I've had. It was just absolutely, uh, like I'll leave links to all these if you wanna watch them, but it was so much fun getting to talk about the things that I see in my classroom and some of the ills of the world that are damaging us and the next generation. I care very much about education and about fairness. So it's, you know, I'm ranting for like two hours. I've also been on Chatting with Nuts and the Fantasy Network, uh, his bi-weekly uh, Friday just kind of podcast thing where I hold first, second, third, and fourth place for talking the longest, which I'm not certain is a good thing, but it is just, it's just been a blast to talk about whatever. So thank you, everybody who I've done a collab with, everybody who talks in the comments. It has been freaking awesome. Additionally, two of the coolest things that I got to do was to talk to Josiah Bancroft with, uh, also with Evie and Chase and Greg, and also to Sebastian de Castell about the Great Coats with Sarah and Adrian and Angela. And that was a blast. They were so kind to give of their time to freaking just let us gush and fanboy uh, over them uh, and, and their series. They, are, they're, they were so funny and so nice and just so generous. So I really, really am honored that I got to, I got to do that. That was a lot of fun. And so who knows? Maybe I'll get to talk to somebody else this coming year. And I definitely cannot end a year wrap up without talking about my patrons. I, look, I don't have, I don't have the biggest channel. Like, I, that's what happens when you talk about crap that no, that nobody reads, which is fine. It's fine. I don't mind being the kid, like, <laughs> getting rained on, looking in at the DDR party because I haven't read First Law or Dune or Wheel of Time, it's fine. But the amount of people who support my wife and I through Patreon is just, it's absolutely wonderful. And they are such kind and warm and generous individuals. And the ones that come and hang out in the Discord make the community, like, look, everyone says this, but like, I got the best, I got the best community online. Our Discord is so, it's so drama-free and so welcoming and so warm and everyone's really nice. And, you know, we have some good discussions about books. I'm not always as active as, I'm, as I want to be, but I have great mods that keep, keep the chat going. And, you know, you can always pick on Klaus or Tom. And I just, I'm so, I'm so grateful. I'm in, in awe that people would support us because I... I don't love locking content behind paywalls because when I like when I do something like I want everyone to see it. It's like, well, I don't just want I don't just want like three people to be able to see this. And I am just not together enough to do stuff early. So I don't get things out early. I get things out the day before. So my students are like, how many questions are on this test? Who cares? But I'm like, I don't know. I haven't written it yet. I'll write it tonight. I'll write it before your test. I haven't written the test yet. So it's not like there's early access. So they do get a bunch of life updates. Like Christine and I address and talk about our lives. And, and you know, there's every now and there's stuff and they vote on or they, they put stuff on the wheel to, for me to, to me to read and everything. But it's not, it's not a ton. And so you guys who support us, you're doing it because you just want to support us. And we appreciate that so much. We are trying to transition in so many ways in our lives. And your generosity is helping us to do that and it helps us that to, for us to be generous also we don't have to choose between transitioning and also being generous 
uh, to other people. And so just thank you guys so much. It means it means the absolute world to both Christina and I. She would be here, but her sister is going back to college tomorrow, so she's over there uh, hanging out with her for the last night, or else she would be here. Yes, thank you so much. She agrees, I promise. You guys are, are so, so wonderful. All of you who engage with, with the videos and comment, absolutely incredible that anyone cares what I have to say. It is, I mean, it's just, it's just dumbfounding. So it's awesome. So thank you so much. As far as next year, I have the same, I have the same, look, all these people coming out with these videos about these are the changes or this is what I'm doing in, in 2022. I don't know. Like I, 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 my, my, my reading schedule is the same as it, as it was 60 books, um, which is like one book a week, but I, you know, sneak away with, with novellas and short stories in there that, that whoop gooses the stats. And again, it is all to each their own. Everyone is free to do everything the way they want to do it. I despise the algorithm. I don't even like hearing the word. The capital A algorithm might as well be one of Lovecraft's great old ones at which all the cultists bow to and sacrifice Arkhamites or, you know, people who live in Arkham. I hate the algorithm. I hate, I hate, I don't, I don't understand, I don't care, I don't understand it. And, and I don't, I don't want, I don't want to understand it. I have never clicked on my analytics tab other than to see um, what, uh, what my breakdown of, because I was super interested to see the percentage of male and female viewers, because a bunch of us were talking about that one time. So that's the only time I clicked on the analytics tab. I don't even like that YouTube added this thing where if you're a creator, you know, it wasn't here when we start, when I started last year, but now it's like, Every time you post a video, right, you can't miss it. Like right under the video, it's like, oh, fewer people are choosing to engage in this video. And it's just like, I don't want to know that. Like, I know, I know. I put out a review. I know fewer people are, you don't have to rub it in, YouTube. I, I don't care. I don't care. Like, I, I understand YouTube. It's like, oh, more people than usual are engaging with it. Stop, stop it, YouTube. Quit force feeding me your information. I don't know. I don't know what messes with the algorithm, whatever. I am going to make videos about crap I want to talk about. And you know what? Maybe no one will watch them. And that sucks. And you know what? The algorithm probably hates that. Screw you, algorithm. How about an uppercut? That's right, Officer Krupke. I don't know how to play that game. I don't understand it. I'm going to make book reviews, even if it's like the eighth in a 10 book series, no one's going to watch that. It makes me feel better to get that out of my head and make room for something else. So there it is. I'm hoping to actually get started on history videos and we'll see who actually uh, watches those. Uh, more Jeopardy, more Better Know a Booktuber, uh, more of this nonsense. I'm hoping to have my wife on more. Uh, I like talking about you know, our lives and, and things that go on. I, most recently I talked about having Asperger's. I might talk about that some more because the autistic experience is very interessante. So who knows? All I know is that everyone who tries something different that ends up tanking, you know what? I got your back. Like I try to watch, anytime someone posts something that I just know is not like, you know, the algorithm's gonna hate. I'm like, I try to watch it no matter what it is so I can, I can lend my support and fight the system because it should be a revolution. Screw you, algorithm. Like that's like you're forcing everybody to have the same crap and they don't. But it, like if it had its way, that's what it would be. So whatever. It'll be more of the same. And I hope, I hope you watch it and I hope more people watch it because anyone who says they don't care about growing their channel, I mean, you're lying. Like you're, you're lying. Every, no one comes on here like, you know what? I don't want more than 500 people to see what I'm putting out. Of course not, of course. We want it to grow. So I'm hoping to grow more. It'll be super fun. So just expect more of the same and more collabs. It'll be super, super fun. More read-alongs. Uh, we did two this last year. I'm just rambling at this point. So let me wrap this up. Thank you guys so, so much. So guys, that is it for me. Sorry if this was a little rambly, but it's been a great year and I'm so appreciative. I, I don't, it is hard to express gratitude and seem sincere because words cost nothing. It costs no one anything to say whatever they want. So it is more important that it is sincere. It's gonna be a good year. It's gonna be a good year. How excited are you for this year? What are you looking forward most that's coming out this year to read? And why is it Our Lady of Blades by Sebastian de Castell, the first book in the new 
Great Coats trilogy, because <laughs> that's my, that's what I'm looking forward to the most. So guys, thanks a ton. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of my wife's very, very large heart, because she's the kindest person on the face of the planet. Thank you guys so much. As always, information about my Patreon and my Discord is down in the description, and I'll see you next time, guys. Thank you.